Biggio. Kevin Biggio. Kevin Biggio. All right. Kevin Biggio. Hello and welcome to Blue Jays Today, where we always have something to say about the Blue Jays. I'm your host, Nick. And I'm Adam. And today we got a topic that we're going to talk about, which is Kevin Biggio. Mm. He is one of my favorite players on the Jays. Now, you know, there's definitely Vladdy, there's definitely Bo Bichette, and like Biggio is kind of that one that's considered as that third trio, that trifecta of the Blue Jays that are going to be the future. Mm-hmm. But Kevin Biggio is a very different player. And before we get into that, I do want to mention that Blue Jays are going to be starting training tomorrow, July 1st, in Toronto. It's confirmed. So we're really, really hoping, wishing the boys luck. Get those reps in. Get ready for the season. We're really, really excited to see you guys play. Can't wait. Are you excited? It's exciting stuff, man, to know that it's actually happening. Like, yeah. I remember... I remember being down in the darkest of, of pits, just <laughs> imagining a whole season gone by, a whole year where these kids don't get to play. But it is mm-hmm. official, and it looks like it's happening. What's going to happen with COVID? We don't know, but we're going to see. Yeah, we just hope for the best health for everyone. You know, hopefully everyone's staying safe, staying cautious, and that we can play baseball safely and on time. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, let's talk. Biggio. Right. Kevin Biggio. Kevin Biggio. All right. Kevin Biggio. Kevin Biggio is a unique player. I want to. I definitely want to put that out there. That mm. when we were doing the research on his statistics, he was unlike a lot of other players. And mm. the main stat, which if you've watched this kid, you already know what we're going to say. The main stat that comes out and and really just slaps you across the face is this kid's ability to walk. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Honestly, little little league me playing baseball growing up, that kid's my idol. Because, like, I remember my coaches would always slap it, and I was like, you got to work the count. you got to protect. you got to blah, blah, blah. Protect, actually. We'll get into that. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get into that. Yeah. Um, but you got to, you know, you got to have a great eye at the plate. And that's something that Kevin Vigio takes, you know, takes to the grave. And we got a few numbers here to kind of break down, you know, exactly for you guys. How does this guy, what pitches does he look at? What pitches does he swing at? Everything. So, Nick, you have a few stats that you wanted to talk about? Well, I mean, I definitely want to highlight the fact that this guy is is in the top 2% of the major leagues for walk rate. Yeah. Um, and, and put that, like, literally put that in perspective. This yeah. is a rookie kid, mm-hmm. all right? And red alert, red alert, red alert. <laughs> hot take coming in. Hot take? What's a hot take? All right, the hot take is I think the Cam is going to lead the major leagues next season in walks uh, just due to this high walk rate. It was 16.5%. The people that he was with was Bregman, Harper. And, and Trout. Trout. Yeah. Um, so I, that's my hot take right now. Right. Um, that is a hot take. That is a hot take. We'll definitely discuss that as season goes on. Yeah. Because uh, yeah, the only thing is that if for Cabin Bijou for me is that he doesn't oppose a threat just yet in his short career so far mm. with the bat. He doesn't really well, – you know, you got Bregman, Harper, and Trout, all home run hitters, all great eyes, yeah. and dangerous. They can mm-hmm. hit any ball, any speed, any pitch, anywhere. Mm-hmm. Where Biggio, you know, he has a – he's an incredible, incredible eye and play discipline, no doubt about it. But there's, there's some areas where it's almost too good. <laughs> yeah. And um, here, here's one of them right here. Um, so chase percentage this is the amount of pitches that uh, uh, he actually chases that are thrown to him. He only chases 13.5%, which is low. The league average is 28.3%. So put that in perspective, that's insane. Granted, chase percentage being low, that's pretty good, no? Yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I think what we're struggling with is the next stat that you were going to say, yes, which the next is his stat. chase contact. Exactly. His chase contact is 41.2, um, which is below league average of 59.6. So when he does have to defend the plate at, on two strikes, early in the count, he's not chasing very, very often. But later in the count, when it comes to two strikes, when he kind of forces him to chase, and when he act, when sometimes he doesn't even do. Obviously, he doesn't do it as often. But when he does, he's actually not even making contact as often. Mm-hmm. And yeah, yeah, I mean, I think my big problem right now with Kevin Biggio is, 
And there is a lot of stuff to like. Like, this eye that he has is just incredible. But he's not the type of player that when we have some, when we have a runner in scoring position and, you know, we're like, this is the, the end of the inning, like the last out. He's not the guy that I want to see walking up to the plate right now. I, I don't believe that he's going to be able to smack these people in. And a lot of that has to do with how much he's actually swinging his bat. And it's pretty much all below league average, like his zone swing percentage, um, his chase percentage. Uh, he is below league average on first pitch swing percentage and literally just general swing percentage. Kevin Biggio is below league average in all of these statistics. Mm -hmm. um, so he... Yeah. It, it, it comes from his great date, like his plate discipline, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, of course, like it's not a bad thing to not be swinging, but the only thing is when he does swing, he's not getting and producing enough numbers because his expected batting average is literally 240. Yeah. Right? So, and realistically, like to have, we want this kid to presumably bat second. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and to have a, an expa expected batting average of 240 batting second, like those numbers, it, 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 it almost doesn't compute. Mm -hmm. What does make up for it is his on base percentage, which was 364 yeah. last year. And that's literally solely from all of these walks yeah. that this kid keeps taking. And I want to break down his at bat a little bit further into some stat cast stats. Um, so there's a swing take profile. And basically what the swing take profile is is break down exactly where the ball is thrown in the zone, um, how often do you swing at it compared to league average, and as well as how many runs are you actually giving your team um, by either taking or swinging at those pitches. Mm. So, um, you know, in the heart of the zone, it's he's around league average. He swings 71% of the time, so right in the middle of the zone. Now, around the shadow parts, which is just inside the zone on the edges, and just on the edge or just outside the zone. So borderline umpire could call. Mm -hmm. The league average is 53% uh, of swing rate. Kevin Biggio is at 37%. That is wow. well, well, well below. So he's not offering on those pitches. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to continue with the next one, but keep that in mind. The chase uh, percentage, which is balls, clear balls outside the zone, yeah. uh, not even close. Um, yeah, the league average is at 24%. But he's at 8% of swing. Excellent. Which is amazing. Now, going back to the shadow, that's the one part that jumps out at me. Pitchers, good pitchers, are going to be able to beat Kevin Biggio because they know he's most likely going to take edge pitches. Now, mm -hmm. good pitchers can paint the edges of the zone. Yeah, he's not going to be able to match up against your Coles or your Scherzers or your Verlanders yeah. of the game. Not not with his current um, his current approach because his runs that he's actually he's actually losing the Blue Jays 14 runs. Uh, when pitches are pitched at the edge of the zone, he's actually doing more damage. Granted, mm -hmm. he actually is, he's giving us a lot more runs. He's actually uh, 11. He actually gives us 11 runs. 11. So okay. he's still, he, again, he's still. That's a great over the course player. of a season. That's over the course of last right. season. He, yeah. He's still doing great, but I think that's the one part that just needs Trevor. He's got to be more of a threat, protect the edge of the plates, make contact so that the pitchers have to start changing up on him as opposed to just always pounding him on the edges. Yeah, you know, I think I think to sum up Kevin Biggio, I think both of us are in the same boat where mm -hmm. we definitely like his potential. There is some statistics that, you know, rival the other elites of the game, and then there are other statistics that are, are clearly in need of work. Like, it, it's so clear to me what this kid has to do. Um, so, realistically... That was his first season. Mm. Uh, we need to hope that Kevin Biggio and, and the coaches of the Blue Jays are looking at these numbers and saying, all right, pal, like, we got to get your contact up. We got to get you more comfortable hitting the ball. Mm -hmm. Do and, you think he's going to be able to do that? Um, you know what? Well, we could talk about our projections. That's I, what I was waiting for. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think um, Kevin Biggio this year – it's just it's a shortened season, right? Mm. I still think he's gonna hit roughly where he did. Probably gonna be a little bit better. So what I have him projected as average is two forty five. Yeah. His on base is gonna be three eighty four. Slugging four fifty six. Run score. He's batting in the top of the lineup thirty six. Mm -hmm. um, I do think his home runs are gonna improve. It's I think they're gonna hit ten, which last year he had sixteen. So right. well, uh, and shortened he, season. Again. Shortened season. This is half of the what he did last year. So mm -hmm. I think ten. Uh, and his RBIs are going to be 23. And yourself? 
Uh, yeah, I mean, what I have for him right now, um, and again, like, it's it's so hard to say because I, I see Kevin Biggio right now, and I see two very polarizing and different seasons that this kid could have. If he does figure out how to make contact with the ball, like, I think that we're looking at, like, we, we have a, an immediate a, a threat at the plate now. Um, and if he doesn't, if he continues to do what he did, like, we're going to have very similar numbers. But I put him at a, a minor Im- improvement. I put him at 247. Uh, I think it's very doable for him. A little mm. bit, a couple points more than you did. But, you know, yeah. coming into the second season. Uh, his on-base percentage, uh, I have him at 380. Uh, like, he's going to walk a lot. We know it's going to happen. Uh, slugging, 438. And then for the runs, I have him going 38 runs, 25 RBIs, and 7 home runs uh and you know honestly if he does that like if he does what i'm projecting him to do then i think that that's going to be a very successful sophomore season mm-hmm. for kevin biggio absolutely and honestly i'm i still can't wait i still can't believe it. it's literally what is it three weeks now uh or, well, what day what what day what are we 30th on? 31st we're it's july 1st tomorrow yeah <laughs> so 23 24 so, days yeah Roughly yeah. three weeks, and we're almost there. And we're gonna, we actually booked those days off work, so we're thinking about uh, doing a little podcast. A lot after. of content <laughs> will be happening in those couple days. Oh, yeah. I can promise you that. But. Oh, yeah. But, anyways, guys, so that's that's all that we're gonna talk about today for Kevin Biggio. Let us know what you guys think. Do you think Kevin Biggio is gonna lead the league in walks, or do you think he's gonna maybe decrease and maybe have a little bit of a sophomore slump? Mm-hmm. Uh, you can, um, I have to consult the script right now because <laughs> there's so many bloody platforms. Mm-hmm. But you can follow us on Spotify, Google Podcasts, Radio Public, Anchor, Breaker, and, of course, YouTube and Instagram. And that's all we got for today, guys. Thanks for watching. Go, Chase, go.